Welcome back to Wingnuts, the home of micro maintenance. And on this week's episode, we're doing a job that we get asked about every week. It is reskinning a Sky Ranger from Dacron to Xlam. So before we get to there, first of all, we've got to do all of this. And this is one of those jobs, like I've said, that we get asked about all of the time. It certainly seems to be a concern for a lot of you Dacron Sky Ranger owners uh, about the life of, uh, of your skin. So we're gonna take a look at that as well. I'm gonna do a bets test on this one uh, and just see at what level it does break. What we're gonna do is we're gonna strip this aircraft right back. Uh, I'm gonna take a look at all of the tubes all of the cables, every bolt. Whilst we've got this great opportunity to inspect this aircraft thoroughly, we're gonna take it. So uh, the guys who own this aircraft are a fantastic bunch. It's great to be working with those. We're also popping in a Mark II dashboard. So that's the bow top one. We're gonna give a nice upgrade to the instruments uh, and a full rewire. There's also a number of HADS mods that we're also gonna do to this aircraft. I'm quite looking forward to it. So I uh, hope you enjoy this journey and I'll see you on the other side. So that's the first stage of rip out complete. We, uh, we've been able to rip out the, all the old electrics, all the old seats, all the old tanks. Everything that uh, uh, needs to come out, interior wise has come out. Obviously engine covers have come off. We can see the engine there. Spats have come off everything so we can get a good look at, at the aircraft. It's easier again on this side to identify um, certain, uh, certain cables, particularly engine temperatures and pressures and CHCs and uh, and all of that. So all of that's on a pallet. Uh, next stage for us is we're going to look at removing the skins. So it's uh, it's a reskin, as we know, and there are varying ways of doing it. We could attack it with a Stanley knife. <gasps> that sounds painful. Um, or we can remove them. I'm favouring the removing option. So we'll have flaps off, ailerons off. Um, and then we can take the elevators and rudders off because I think ideally we would work on the main structures. Yeah. So we'll work on the fuselage and the wings. The, the wings have got to come off anyway, which yeah. gives us great opportunity to inspect uh, yeah. and check the Get real tubes. eyes on the structure. Yeah, yeah. 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 We can see, because I think there might be some damage to some of the battens okay. uh, from you know observation. Or? Time, the nylon, uh, okay. you know, the. Uh, life of aircraft they all go mm. through different things so how yeah. did the bets test go it came in originally because um the owners were concerned that the uh, skins weren't as structurally sound and they were unsure if it was going to pass a future permit to fly so um it's a lot easier to fly yeah. an aircraft into a maintenance center <laughs> than recover it by road as we well know. Yeah. So um, I think the guys made a, a great decision and they wanted to upgrade anyway. Like I say, we're doing a lot more on the, on the cockpit. It's off. <laughs> uh, nice productive few hours. Um, the scary bit is it comes off a lot quicker than it goes back on again. So there's a bit of work to be done. The, uh, the main issue is trying to not damage anything whilst taking it off. So it's much easier than I say we ummed and ah, do you just hit it with a Stanley knife and rip it out? Actually, it's a lot easier to remove the tubes and all the, the tensioning uh, um, brackets and all of that because you're only going to take them off anyway. So it's much easier to remove the system. What it does allow us now uh, is full access to the, uh, to the exoskeleton. So we can get into it and check for any corrosion, check any tubes. So there's already things like bolts and nuts that we looked at that we're going, right, it'd be ideal to swap these out. So now's a great time to do it. This is something that's quite common um, with plastic saddle washers, um, is that they break and over time they, they wear down. So you can see here on this one, the lower saddle washer has completely disappeared. Um, so that needs to be replaced. But what we're going to do is there's a number of saddle washers. This one down here looks to be cracked or fractured there. So that needs to be replaced. Um, and again, when we were thinking of the other job, we also need to put a new um, uh, uh, skin on this. 
it's going to be easier to take the whole thing off and reskin it and do it that way. So it means that we can replace the old nylon washers with these new aluminium washers. So whilst we're doing some jobs, it's easier to do others as well. So we're going to now brace the tail because you don't want to be leaving these fuselage tubes uh, just hanging. And then I can remove the entire stabilizer. It's going to be a lot easier to reskin it and we can put back uh, some much better saddle washers uh, to give it a bit more longevity and a bit more life. Well, as you can see, or you probably may have seen in some of the other footage, these nuts have become corroded um, over time. I think it's more to do with dissimilar metal corrosion because it's attached to this steel um, uh, cross member. But basically all the corroded nuts and washers are coming off one at a time so we don't distort the airframe at all. And then I'm uh, going to put fresh nuts and washers on. So it's a new day for us, probably about 10 seconds for you, but for us, we had a really good day yesterday. We were able to strip back the main uh, fuselage, got the wings uh, stripped back as well, and we got obviously all the tailplane and elevators and all of those control surfaces, they came off as well. And we've started to put back, which is great to be, uh, you know, so short down the line and already putting things back. So today what we have set ourselves a target for is to uh, reskin the fuselage and get the tailplane back on. Now, if you've never reskinned uh, anything before, I, can, I can't even begin to tell you how, what a mean feat that is. There is a lot of work to be done. So what I'll do at some point, um, I'll give you a bit of footage of reskinning one of the surfaces and just show you what's involved in it because it's a time labor uh, process. You really need to work uh, those skins to get them right because there's a number of them that you really will struggle to get any wrinkles or things like that out. So anyway, big day for us today. Uh, we are going to crack on and see where we end up by the end of play today. Okay, so we are ready to put the tail back on. As we said before, the nylon washers that were uh, on this tail section, um, there's a number of them that are split, so we are replacing, as, as if I'd prepared it, and with aluminium washers. Now, it's important, particularly on stuff like this, that obviously it goes back correctly. So it's important, or certainly for me, that you use the manual. Fortunately, Flyer Light Sky, uh, Sky Rangers, have a very uh, informative manual, which is a pleasure to work with. So for the sake of printing off a sheet, we can now put this back together. As per the manual, then I'm gonna get a separate inspector to check it off, make sure it's correct, and then we can sign it off in the logbook to say that it's been done correctly. Do you like crawling underneath aeroplanes? I love it, yeah. Favorite part of the job. What are you doing? Uh, uh, we are, we are, uh, prepping the fuselage for the external skin. So we've got the uh, pitot tube, which needs securing in place. Get out of that way. And uh, again, preventative jobs. So we're replacing all the fuel lines because it's a lot easier to do it now. So we're just trying to find a, uh, a route for the fuel line uh, from the engine to the filter. So we've got the scary stage now. <laughs> we've started Mark, we've started. Okay, we've got the scary stage now. We've, um, we've done the uh, frame alignment, we've got the fuel plumbing. E everything that basically we can do with the skin off, checking the tanks are all in now, haven't we? Yeah, all the jobs that make that are a lot easier to do now, uh, we've done. Um, there are some jobs that you can do with the skin on, obviously changing fuel pipes, but it's just easier to do it with the skin off. So uh, I think we're ready for the skin. Let's do it. 